Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Riddell and welcome to another Tutorial Bucket Tutorial. A quick one today, we're going to have a look at creating a 1940s style glamour portrait. Now the original image, so you see where we're coming from, is this and an important part of making this really work is the look of the original photograph. So if you've got costumes or something that can give it a bit of a 1940s or golden age Hollywood look to begin with, that helps a lot. The completed image, as you can see, it's in black and white, but you can use colour toning if you want to use colour toning. But it's got the hallmarks of what we associate with the glamorous headshots from the 1930s and 1940s Hollywood. The effects that we're going to be using to do this are not particularly complicated. So let's just dive in. First of all, I'm going to need to put in an adjustment layer. So I'll just go down to my layers palette and I'll add in a new adjustment layer. And the type of adjustment layer that we're going to put on this one is, not so surprisingly, a black and white. I'll just put black and white down. Now for the black and white, what we want to do here is just adjust the tones and a typical thing for those glamorous shots of the 40s is the highlights tend to be very high and the skin tones tend to be very bright. Now I'm thinking more of the female headshots. The uh, male headshots didn't have all that much done to them really. But uh, here's how we fix up the highlights and skin tones. In the black and white adjustment layer we've got two controls that are very important. They're reds and yellows. Reds, they control the base skin tone and yellows, they mostly control the highlights, so you need to balance these two out. So mostly the yellows are going to have to be pushed up a little bit, and the reds, you can just eyeball the reds to see how much is enough just to up the intensity of the skin tone. doesn't need terribly much. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what we've got from before and after, so that's a nice lightening. All right, now the next thing we need to do is another very particular thing about those glamour photos from that era is the focus. Often the focus is very sharp on very particular parts of the image. It's, the whole image itself is mostly very diffuse using very, 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 very small apertures. So it's a very narrow focus plane. Now the narrow focus plane, there's a few ways we can go about this, but I think it's best just to tackle it the easy way. So I'm going to create a stamp of the existing image. That is on a PC, Control, Shift, Alt, and E. On the Mac, that is Shift, Command, Option, E. And that will then give you a stamp. This is a combined copy merged. If it was all far too complicated for you, just go to the edit menu and use a copy merged. So you'll need to select all, select all, and then use an edit copy merged, and then paste. But control, shift, alt, e, or command, option, shift, e. Okay, so we've now got our copy there, which I am going to rename, and I'm going to call this blurred. And we're going to blur this using a Gaussian Blur. So we'll go to the Filter menu, go to Blur, choose the Gaussian Blur. How much Gaussian Blur do you want? Well, how long's a piece of string? It's going to depend on the image. You'll have to eyeball this. So I want enough blur so that the background elements are pretty much blurred out of existence. So for this image, it's going to be somewhere around about a setting of between 30 and 40 and say OK. OK. Now, obviously, this isn't too good because we need to get some detail. Now, there's a couple of things we could do at this point. One is we could take this blurred image and we could change its blending mode and put it into overlay. And that is often not a bad idea because it does give you a very soft effect around the edges. So as if you have done the Glamour Skin Glow tutorial know about this trick and then fiddle around with the opacity just to soften up the skin a little bit. You could do that. That's one thing perfectly reasonable to do. The other thing that you could do though, which I'm going to do in this case, is I'm going to just leave it as it is. I'm not going to go for the overlay and glamour glows, but you can do that as well. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a layer mask for this, and here's a trick for adding a layer mask that's already pre-filled in. Hold down on the PC the Alt key, on the Mac it's the Option key and then click on Add Layer Mask and that will drop in a layer mask that's pre-filled with black. 
Okay, so we've now got this filled in. Now, what's the big deal? Well, we're going to get ourselves a brush. Reasonably largish brush. Depending on the image, you can see mine is very, very big, but I use very high resolution images. And the hardness, very important, is set to zero. Okay, now that I've got that set, I'll check the opacity, and the opacity, which is normally set to 100%, I'm going to set this to a lower setting. I'm going to drop this down to about 25%, somewhere around there should be good. And I'll just make sure that my color for the layer mask is set to white, so I'm going to start painting in white at a low opacity. So what does this mean? Well, it means I'm going to be able to start blurring out things gradually, not all in one hit. I can start to blur out the background, for example, by just hitting it again and again and again. So I can really get that to blur out quite strongly. And I can selectively start to blur out areas that I would like to blur. And now it starts to look, it really does start to look like a vintage Hollywood glamour portrait because of those very, very narrow focal planes that they were using, very narrow depth of field. So I can start to really blur out the details there, all the way up to the cheek. Main thing I'm going to try and keep in focus, of course, is the details. Oops, a bit of a shot there. Just get rid of that guideline. Thank you. And just get rid of the uh, detail up there on the hair. And a little bit less detail down here on the decotage. So I'm just working here to defocus it all a little bit, or in this case a lot. Ugh, annoying things though, I'm going to have to turn off my rulers I think. Goodbye ruler. There. Now it won't annoy me anymore. Okay, just a little bit more. Not too much. A little bit of blur on the eye there. Because the, remember the lenses back in those days, they weren't quite as sharp as we've got these days. These days you can get these really great pin sharp images. Um, part of the reason for the look of some of those photos is they use some really strong, very contrasty lighting. And that worked a treat of course, but uh, now we can use much lower lighting, which is much more subtle, so we can get more even effects. So we're really faking up a, uh, an effect which was really something of a limitation on photography at the time which has since become something quite attractive to look at. Okay, so a very wild looking layer mask but that's not a bad looking effect so let's just compare with our before and our after. And that is starting to look the goods. Okay, now, we looked at that Glamour Glow effect. I reckon it's best to throw down that Glamour Glow effect if you're going to use it after you've done your blurring and selective blurring on the image. So, I'm now going to do another stamp. So, again, PC, Control, Shift, Alt, E. On the Mac, Command, Shift, Option, E. And I'm going to blur this again. Use the same setting for your Gaussian Blur runs that blur again and this time I will set this into overlay mode. Mmm, now that's starting to look nice. Knock down the opacity somewhat, I'd say depend again you have to eyeball this, it depends on the image, but it's going to usually be somewhere between 25 and 80 percent. It really depends on the lighting in the image. But I'm focusing mostly on the effect of the skin here, so I think I'll just set this for around about 45 percent, somewhere around there. And now I'll do my comparison. Here is before and there is after. Very nice glamorous vintage Hollywood black and white portrait.